What we're going to be going over here is governmental accounting for long-term obligations. That would include long-term debt and also fixed assets. And looking at a basic overview here and how we handle our long-term debts and obligations here in our fixed assets when we're dealing with governmental units here, or governmental bodies. So when we're dealing with governments here and accounting for governments, we really have to deal with what we'd have our governmental funds here. And then along with those governmental funds, we have what they call accounting control groups here. And this is where we keep track of our general fixed assets and our general long-term obligations, which would include long-term debt. Okay, so we've got the account control groups here, and then we have those governmental funds. Okay, so we have to, first let's look at what we're talking about with a governmental fund. A governmental fund, first it would be an accounting and fiscal, a fiscal entity here. You, you'd have your separate accounting and fiscal entity here for each of those governmental funds. And they would act like a self-contained business here. And this is where you're gonna keep track of the monies coming in and also the monies going out here. So what we'd have here for governmental funds, we'd have like five separate funds here, and we'll just go basic over our basic definition of what these funds do here and what they don't do. So for the general fund here, that would be the day-to-day -day operations here for the governmental body like the city or the municipality. And then you'd have a special purpose fund. This is where you might keep uh, track of highway dollars or uh, or some special up. Uh, uh, purpose here for the municipality. And then you're going to have a capital projects fund. This is where you keep track of your construction of some project here for the municipality or the governmental unit. And then you'd have like a permanent fund here. That's where you have some investments, uh, dollars or investment uh, instruments set aside here and where you can only use the interest that these investments are making here for governmental invest a uh, got the governmental body here and then finally fifth year you'd have your debt service fund okay so first off here looking at our our funds here none of these funds carry fixed assets those are going to be carried in there are accounting control groups and not not they're not capitalized in the fund themselves here that's going to be taken care of in our accounting control groups so again, these first funds here, general fund through our permanent fund here, they do not service long-term debt. Where we, uh, where we take care of our, or accumulate our money here to pay the long-term debt, that's gonna be in our debt service fund. So debt service fund accumulates the dollars to pay off the debt here. And any of these other funds here, they do not service any long-term debt. That's gonna be taken care of in our accounting control groups. And again, none carry any fixed assets. Okay, so let's go and again, go over our accounting control groups here. We have the general fixed asset accounting control group and then the general long-term obligation. Uh, control group here which includes our long-term debt and that's we would keep track of each we could keep track of these each of these separate here these control groups for each of these funds here okay so let's go and let's first look at uh, we'll start out with here let's go at the general long-term debt group here so this is what it would be here this is where we record the unmatured principle of some long-term obligation or long-term debt now, first off, it's not a fund. It does not collect or disperse money. Two, it monitors long-term debt or obligations here. And three, it contains numerous types of unmatured government liabilities here. That would be like long-term debt, claims and judgments against the uh, governmental body here, like accumulated sick leave, underfunded pensions and post-retirement benefits, in capital lease obligations, unmatured bonds, and so forth. So you get an idea what would be included in the general long-term debt group. It's not just debt or like bonds here, but it be, could be any of the things that I mentioned here, plus many others. Okay, so the general long-term debt group, it's, it has a self-balancing nature here. So in the incurrence or at the issuance of long, some long-term obligation here, or long-term debt. This is the recording that we do, and I'm just showing it in debits and credits here. So what you would have, you'd start out, uh, you'd have the amount to be provided for the payment here, and that would be a debit amount, and then your credit would go to a fund, fund liability account, 
That would be a crediting amount here. And each would be properly identified. So to deal with this governmental accounting, you're going to have a lot of definitions here, and they have to be identified for, the, in this case, the uh, fund liability here and the amount to be provided here. Okay, so that's our general long-term debt group here. Now let's move over to our general fixed asset account group. Now this is where you're going to keep detailed inventory records of the fixed assets. So really what this general fixed asset account group does is just keep a record of what's going on with your fixed asset. Again, first off, it's not a fund. It does not collect or disperse monies or dollars. What it is, is a list, secondly here, it's a list of government owned assets and we use a double entry form here to keep track of those assets. And that would be, those assets would be like land, buildings, improvements here, separate from any land or from any of the buildings, and then machinery, equipment, and construction, construction and process. So you have these six, uh, you have these six separate asset accounts here. And again, there's no dollars involved. You, you'll have dollar amounts showing, but there's no really dollar amounts that you're dealing with. It's just really a listing here, a record of the fixed assets. And three here, it keeps track of the carrying value here. That would be like accumulated depreciation here on some of your assets. And four, the acquisition of general, we're looking here at the acquisition of any general capital assets is recorded as such here. So first you'd have this specific asset account. You'd have that a debit amount here. And then for your crediting, you'd have the original funding source of the asset here. That would be your credit amount. And that funding source of the asset, that would either be the capital projects funds, a general fund uh, revenues here, general fund for our revenues, or a special revenues fund, or some donations. So that's our basic recording here. Take Record the specific asset account here and, uh, and then you'd have your original funding source, those four uh, funds here. The capital Projects Fund, General Fund for, uh, for Revenues here, or any special revenues fund, and then any donations. So next we're going to go through an example here for recording the funding here for a long-term asset and the associated liability. Now let's apply what we've just discussed here for governmental accounting for general capital assets and general long-term obligations, and it could be for debt obligations as well here. And we'll just look at our basic journal entries that we'd have to make. So our example here is going to be where we lease some equipment for $800,000, has a 10-year life, and we're going to be looking at some interest payments on this leased equipment. So what we have to do here, we're going to have look at this in T-account form here, where we've broke it down between our general fund here, and then under our general fund, we're going to be looking at our account groups here. We're going to have two different account groups that we're going to be looking at. And then we're going to first be looking at the inception of the lease here, and then secondly, the first interest payment on this lease. Okay, so let's look at what we have to do here. So under our, our fund, or it would be our general fund here, this is where we'll be recording our funding here. And then under our fund group here, our general fund, this is where we're going to have to set up our account groups here. And we're going to be looking here first to record our recording our fixed asset, this lease here. And then secondly, we're going to be recording the unmatured principal here on this uh, in this lease here. So that's what we have to deal with with our account groups. So let's start out with our first with our funding here our, on, in our general fund. So what we do here at the inception of this lease are, we're, and focus in here on this on the title here of each one of our T accounts here that we're dealing with here. So that's the key here when you're dealing with government accounting is understanding your uh, T account or your account names here. So uh, starting with our other financing sources here in our general fund. Again, this is for our, under our fund here. This is where we're going to credit it for eight hundred thousand dollars. The uh, cost that are that least equipment price here. And then the debit is going to go to our expenditures control under a general fund again here, debit it for $800,000. Now, this is where we're going to carry this least equipment that's cost here. We're going to have to record it both as a fixed, uh, recording it as a fixed asset here and also the unmatured 
principal here on this lease. Now let's go and let's start with a recording our fixed asset here. And this is where we're going to, we'll start out with, okay, let's understand what's going on here for recording our fixed asset. So we go down here, this is where the general fixed, we use the general fixed asset account group. And what we're gonna look at is the specific asset account, we're gonna debit it. So what we would do here, going up to our key account, T account here, this is our specific assets, gonna be our leased equipment, again, under general fixed assets account group, debit it for $800,000, the price of that cost of that lease here. Okay, and then secondly here, we're gonna have the debit, or excuse me, the credit is gonna to go to, let's look at it, the original funding source of the asset. And then again, that's gonna be for our general, under our general fund revenues. I'm not showing it up here in a T account, I'm just showing it as an investment here in capital leases, general fixed assets account group. Credit it here for $800,000. So we've taken care of recording our fixed asset. Now let's go and let's record our unmatured principal. Again, focus in on the titles here. So this is where, let's go down and look at it. This is where we have the general long-term debt account group. And what we have to do is first look at the amount to be provided for the payment, debit amount here. So that's the title, amount to be provided for the payment, general long-term debt account group, debit it for $800,000. Okay, now we have to take care of our credit entry here. And that's gonna be our fund liability account here. We're gonna credit it for $800,000. And we'll call that the capital lease obligation here. Again, general long-term debt account group. So that is how we'd record our unmatured principal here. Just remember, let's go back and look at it. The amount to be provided here and for the payment here, 800 debited for 800,000. And then our obligation, we'd have that a capital lease obligation credit it for 800,000. Everything under the general long-term debt account group. Okay, now let's look at that first interest payment here. So what we're gonna do for our funding here, might look a little confusing here first here, we're gonna have that interest payment, let's just say it's $48,000, and then we're gonna have a reduction here in our principal of $60,000. Uh, these numbers are gonna change here when we, when we go through the different accounts, but what we would do here for that first interest payment, debit our expenditures of control here for 48,000 and also for the interest payment and then the principal amount, debit it for $60,000. And then moving over to our cash account here, again under the general fund, credit it here for $108,000. Okay, so we've taken care of our funding here for that first interest payment. Now let's move down to our account groups here. So for our fixed asset, fixed asset under that leased equipment, we're going to, again, general fixed asset account group, we're gonna credit it for $80,000 here. Uh, and the re that's really the depreciation we're dealing with. Let's look at that. That depreciation here, we have that $800,000 over a 10 year life. So you're gonna get $80,000 per year here. So again, reduce your leased equipment account here by the amount of depreciation of $80,000 here. And again, this is our fixed asset. And then the debit amount here is gonna go into our investment and in capital leases here. And remember, that's our, our general fund revenues here. We're gonna debit it for $80,000. So that's how we'd handle depreciation. Now, we have to go down here and look at our unmatured principal here. So this is the case we're gonna have that reduction in principal. So the amount to be provided uh, for the, again, general long-term debt account group here, we're gonna credit it here for $60,000, the amount of the reduction in principal. So we're reducing the amount that has to be provided here. And then the debit is gonna go under our capital lease obligation here. Again, general long-term debt account group, we're gonna debit it for $60,000. So we're reducing our capital long-term lease obligation. Okay, so what we let's just go back over it here real briefly again here. So remember, when you're dealing with these, uh, uh, when you're dealing with, in this case, we're having some leased equipment here or some capital expenditure here, you're gonna have to record the funding for that capital expenditure. And along with that, you're gonna to have to record, and that would be under your, in this case, we're looking at the general fund in this case, and under the general fund, then we're gonna to have to record 
the fixed asset itself here and the depreciation on that fixed asset. And then we, and as far as our recording our fixed assets here, and let's just, in this case, you have to determine the specific asset account here. And then, uh, and that would be, uh, that would be the specific asset account that you're going to be debiting here. And then the credit is going to go to the original funding source of the asset here. And I'm just saying it's investment and capital lease here. And that's going to come under, uh, come out of general fund revenue. So that you have to set up. And then for that, in this case, we have that unmatured principal that goes into the general long-term debt account group here. And that's where you're gonna have to define, I have to call it the amount to be provided for the payment here. And then on, along with that here, well, you'd increase that, the amount that has to be provided for the payment. And then along with that, you'd have uh, your capital lease obligation here. That's the fund liability account. In this case, we would have credit it here. And then when you go in, you get that first payment, or you make that first payment here, then you're going to uh, reduce your you're going to reduce your leased equipment pri uh, cost here. That's really the depreciation here. We're looking at it at the first payment date or the end of the year. You take and you reduce your uh, fixed asset by the amount of depreciation and also the investment in your capital lease by the amount of that depreciation. Reduce it, and then for the principal itself here, the reduction in principal, then you would have to reduce your amount to be provided by the amount of that principal, that we're, and we're just showing 60000 here. And then you also reduce your capital lease obligation at the time of that first, at the, when you're making that principal payment, here, or you're, making, you're looking at the principal here on that lease. Okay, so that will kind of summarize it. Just remember you have to record your funding in your fund account here and then along with that you have to record your under that on your fund account then you go to your different account groups here in this case we use the general fixed assets account group and then also the general long-term debt account group okay so that'll summarize what we're discussing what we're discussing here